welcome to our beautiful farm. I'm Johan Reinecke from Reinecke Wines. What a pleasure to be here. Uh, I came here many moons ago. I actually started working here as a, as a farm laborer uh, for some extra pocket money while I was a student. I was doing a degree in environmental ethics and um, I was studying in the evenings and working in the vineyards in the daytime. I fell in love with this most beautiful place and I really, uh, I think with knowledge comes obligation. All the books I read on, on nature and our role in nature definitely had a big impact and an influence on how I, how I think and how I live. And um, it basically created the first certified organic and biodynamic farm in Stellenbosch, South Africa. Uh, we've been certified and farming this way now for almost 18 years and uh, we're going from strength to strength. I'm learning a lot as I'm going on. It's incredible fun, and uh, I hope to take you through some of that today. Here at Reinecke Wines, we've got our organic range, and then we have a biodynamic range, and then we have a reserve range. The organic range, uh, basically, it consists of fruit that we buy in from some other uh, organic producers in the Western Cape. The biodynamic range and the reserve range are wines from this estate. We're standing on granite soils. We've got about 300 meters above sea level and we're about 14 kilometers from the ocean. So the wines from our estate generally are a bit more um, structured in their approach and in their expression, minerality on the whites, fine tannins on the reds, and um, they're quite elegant and, and quite delicate, whereas our Organic range, we buy in from warmer climes, from the west coast and the Swartland. We still blend in some of our grapes as well, but that's more uh, sort of fertile soils, a bit more sunshine. And what one finds on those wines would be uh, a bit more fruit, a bit more floral notes, uh, perhaps a slightly sweeter finish in the end. Um, just a bit more accessible and uh, everyday quaffing style of wine. When I started farming organically, I simply understood it as the absence of herbicides, pesticides and fungicides. It's not quite as simple as that and I actually learned it the hard way. Uh, once I removed the chemicals, I, I literally got almost every pest, plague, bug and disease you can find in this country in my vineyards. It was a, it was a disaster. Um, I was loving Mother Nature and clearly she wasn't loving me back. And it took me a bit of time to figure out that one can be organic by neglect or one can be so by design. So by neglect, you simply remove the poison and your farm slowly but surely goes back to wilderness. But by design, what you have to do is you have to take the aggressive, industrialized, agricultural model and replace it with a softer, more organic variation thereof. So what that means um, in practical terms is that we we're still farming and that we still have the challenges in terms of weeds and in terms of pests and in terms of downy and powdery mildew, but we just go about understanding them and managing them in a completely different way. So if you look at the weeds, for example, instead of using uh, herbicides just to, to spray them and to kill them, uh, we try and outgrow them with beneficial plants. So our big emphasis is, is on identifying plants that can coexist with the vineyard in a sort of some sort of synergy and this would include grass species that will build your soil structure, it will include loads of different legumes that have the ability to take nitrogen from the atmosphere and put that in the soil and then of course other plants that either bring up nutrients from deeper lying levels or ones that harbor natural predators. Um, it's quite, you know, it's infinitely complex actually and we're just sort of uncovering it and discovering it as we're going along. Pests in organic farming also pose their challenges. Um, I think our biggest one initially were snails. Uh, I used to actually, you know, as a conventional farmer, just use snail bait that you put down. Um, unfortunately, they, they coat it with a sugary substance, which makes it attractive for other animals as well. And that would include anything from wild birds to your, your pet dog. I had to find another way to get rid of the snails because they were still eating our vines and at that stage I thought the best solution was simply to harvest them and to export them as escargot to France. And it worked really well initially. Um, it actually worked well for a year or two 
But then the feedback I got was that they wanted the nice, big, juicy snails and not the small ones. And I, you know, I had to harvest all of them because they were all eating my vines. So when the escargot door closed, uh, the solution was go back to nature and see what works in nature. And in nature, a duck eats a snail. So I simply set off and I bought about 200 ducks and I got them in the vineyards and they sorted the snails out for us within a year or two. It was amazing. Um, sometimes pests and plants coexist in how one would manage them from an organic point of view. In South Africa, we have a big problem with leaf roll virus. And this virus spread through the saliva of a little insect called a mealybug. When I was still a conventional farmer, I was given a special suit and a mask and everything to wear. I used a pretty heavy poison to stop the spread of leaf roll virus through my vineyards. When we went the organic and the biodynamic route, after three or four years, um, a very interesting thing happened. And that was that this leaf roll virus stopped spreading through my farm and I couldn't find the the mealybug that was spreading it. You might recognize this, a dandelion, jagged leaf, leuventant, uh, lion's tooth. And now this plant grows everywhere, in your lawn, comes up on the pavements, on the side of the road, everywhere. But it just so happens that that same little insect that spreads that disease actually prefers to live on the root of, of this dandelion. So when I stopped killing all the plants and only leaving the vines, um, in fact, what I was doing is I was allowing the insects to live elsewhere other than on the vines. And uh, when they live on the root of the dandelion, they're not busy spreading the leaf roll disease in the vineyard. So it's got a, it's an interesting thing, you know, it's nature's a bit like a spider's web and if you touch it, it's not just the place that you touch that moves, it's the whole web that moves. And um, yeah, I got to understand that often less is more. And uh, with farming comes great responsibility and one must really strive to sort of live and let live and work with nature and sort of find a little place for yourself in the, big, in the, in, in the bigger picture.